In this video review, I'll be talking about the photography features of the Canon EOS R, their first full frame mirrorless camera, which it's a little funky, it has some quirks, but it also has some really cool new features if you're used to shooting Canon cameras for a while now. So I'm gonna be talking about what I like, what I don't like, and who I think this camera is really for, as well as some of my thoughts on the future of Canon's mirrorless cameras and why I'm excited about it. A quick bit of background, I have been using Canon cameras for about seven years now. I own two 5D Mark III's that my wife uses primarily for portrait and wedding photography. I have two Canon C100 Mark II's that I use for my video production company. We also have an 80D and nine or 10 different Canon lenses at this point. So getting to test out the future to me of what Canon is going to create with mirrorless cameras and their new RF lenses has been pretty exciting, but there are some drawbacks on this camera that I'm gonna be talking about as well. Jumping into the actual output of this camera, the image quality you get out of this is really good. It's about a 30 megapixel sensor, very similar to the Canon 5D Mark IV. So if you are already an owner of that camera and you're looking for a big jump in image quality, that's not gonna be why you buy this camera. You're gonna buy this camera because of usability and ergonomics and some of the mirrorless features that you would get not necessarily for an image quality jump. Going through the different features that I really like about this camera, number one would be the electronic viewfinder. This is the main reason to switch to a mirrorless system versus using a DSLR where the viewfinder on DSLR is optical, looking through that mirror, and this, there's no mirror. You're looking at a 3.7 million dot screen, basically, and seeing a live view of what it is you're actually trying to take a photo of. My next favorite thing about this camera is just the size of the focus area when you are taking photos. It's 100% from top to bottom and 88% from side to side. So if you're used to having that diamond and trying to pick the best focus point, focusing and recomposing, now you have a bigger area for you to be able to actually focus with when you're taking photos, which is really great. A quick example of that is basically if you're trying to focus on something, you're not stuck with that diamond like you are normally with other DSLRs. You can go all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom of the screen, and almost all the way to the side to focus on something. The next thing I've really been liking are the RF lenses, the entire new mount system, but more specifically, this focus ring that's right around the end of the lenses. Just having that enables you to go basically full manual with shutter and aperture with your right hand, and your ISO right here with your left hand. Or if you're going to be using older lenses like EF or EFS lenses, they have a mount adapter. And this mount adapter enables you to put those lenses on this camera, but they also have two other versions. One of them adds that control ring, so it's closer to the camera body, not at the end of the lens. Or one with drop-in filters, and those can be ND or variable ND filters or what have you. So that mount adapter bit, if you're a Canon user with a bunch of different lenses, is going to make this camera way more versatile. The best feature I think that's built into these for portrait photographers is actually eye autofocus. This is something that hasn't been in a Canon camera before that I've seen, and what it does is it enables you in single shot mode to not only see the face of someone and track the face while you're taking a picture, but it will actually find the closest eye and focus on that but it won't work in servo. So if you're used to using servo when you're taking portraits of people moving in and out, that eye tracking is not going to be an option, which on Sony cameras is, and hopefully in a new version of the EOS R platform cameras, you will be able to do it in servo. The reason you're able to do this is because of having a separate focus system in the camera, like in a DSLR, you're actually focusing off the image sensor. So the sensor is doing everything. It's using the dual pixel autofocus features from Canon, and it's enabling you to actually do things like take silent photos or do that eye autofocus and face tracking in real time. So the flip out screen I think is really great. Uh, I've always liked this in the lower end Canon cameras like 70 or 80 Ds or the T6Is and things like that. Not only for selfies or vlogging, but if you are maybe wanting to get a different camera angle or you're trying to aim it up high, just the ability to articulate the screen is something that's really worthwhile for me. And the fact that you can also protect the screen when it's traveling and it's not gonna get scratched up. So I really like the flip out screen and the ability to use it as a touch screen, which for me coming from a 5D Mark III is a step up. Now there was a touch screen on the 5D Mark IV, so you already know what that's like, but flip out screen, it's okay with me. A few more things I really have liked about this camera are that 
in manual focusing modes, there is both focus peaking, which kind of puts a color over what's in focus, and there's a focus guide, which is kind of coming from the Canon Cinema line, where it'll tell you as you manually focus on a specific point when you're getting in focus and which direction of the ring you need to turn. That's something that's really helpful for macro photography or even landscape and something where you need to be absolutely precise, so you're gonna manual focus and get a little bit of feedback from the camera of what's actually in focus. I also like that they've upgraded and now this is using USB-C and you can use this charging cable that you need to buy separately or I use my MacBook Pro USB-C charging cable. It works just fine to charge the batteries or offload from the camera if you don't have that SD card reader. And one more last thing that I've really liked so far doing photography with this camera is this 35 millimeter macro lens. This is actually the cheapest one that they released but to me, it's my favorite because it's small and lightweight, which when you're going to mirrorless, that's what you actually want to have is some weight savings, as well as this has image stabilization. So if I'm shooting handheld, my images are gonna be a little crisper and I can shoot at slower shutter speeds, as well as this is a macro lens. So I can get really close and take 35 millimeter macro shots, which is different than taking 100 millimeter macro shots like with this Canon L-Series lens that I've been using for a while now. But there are also a lot of things that I have not liked about this camera. The first one being the touch bar here, this manual function trackpad. To be able to use it to do things, you might have to unlock it and turn it on by holding one of the sides. Or if you have it activated all the time, you're just gonna bump it randomly because that's where your thumb naturally rests. So ergonomically, this has not been my favorite camera to use when I'm not just in manual mode taking pictures using this and this dial to actually change the shutter and aperture and using ISO on the ring. When I need to get to anything else, like maybe autofocus lock or changing position or touching to drag on the screen to select my focus point because there is no joystick, those types of ergonomic things have not really been satisfying for me. Now you should try the camera and see if you can get a feel for it better than I could, but I really like how on the 5D there is a joystick where autofocus lock is where my thumb is resting already. Switching between photo and video mode is a little flick of the switch instead of hitting mode and then info and toggling that way. I just think some of the things that I'm used to are because those are the best way to do them. And some of the changes they made ergonomically with this camera between trying to hit this record button when I'm doing video or this trackpad. To me, it's just a lot of wasted space here where my thumb is actually resting. You should give me the option to press the buttons that I'm going to be using more often like focus lock. This also just tends to get front heavy because of how heavy the L-series lenses are and how light the camera body is. The camera body is about half the weight of a 5D Mark III. And when you put a heavier lens, that just kind of creates this uneven forward balance when you're hand holding the camera. So I started holding the entire lens versus before with a 5D, might have my other hand back here a little bit, and that would enable me to actually just have better balance with the camera. That might change if I put the bottom battery grip on and made it a little bulkier body, but if I'm shooting mirrorless, I want it to be lighter overall. The only experience I've really liked was using this 35 millimeter on there. It made for a light lens, a light camera body, and a lighter experience overall taking photos. So if they came out with more of these lenses in that five or $600 price range that are lighter weight, and don't necessarily have the L series red ring on them, but still go down to something like 1.8, these are the lenses that I would buy. A few other frustrations specific to taking photos are the one SD card slot. That's not the best for shooting events like weddings or anything like documentary that you need a backup copy for. If you need to have two cards, this is not the camera for you. You're gonna have to wait for them to release a more professional mirrorless camera body. And also just eye autofocus not being in servo is a bit frustrating because I really wanted to use that feature, but you have to immediately take the photo and have the framing perfect when it finally locks in on that eye versus being able to lock in on the eye, maybe recompose, maybe walk back with the person and just shoot in servo mode. And there not being a built-in intervalometer to do time-lapse photography is pretty annoying and frustrating because I know in the Canon 80D they have that feature where you can either output a video file or all of the stills individually, but on this camera you can't do intervalometers with a 
output of all the individual photo files, it will make a 4K time-lapse video, which that's a little speedier if you just start needing that for video purposes. But if you're trying to do something special with your photos and you're gonna bring them through Lightroom or something like that, not having a built-in intervalometer means you're going to have to use an external one. Overall, to me, the Canon EOS R is like a highly rated freshman college basketball player who has a lot of potential, but doesn't necessarily have their game together quite yet. So giving them another year to get stronger in the weight room or to work on some of the fundamentals or to actually just get better at some of the things that their coach might be nitpicky about, that's what this camera is to me. I think in another six to 12 or 18 months with the next iteration of this camera, whatever it's called, the EOS R2 or Max or what have you, the next version of this camera that is more in the professional realm, so maybe it's a little bulkier, two card slots, maybe it brings back the joystick or drops the trackpad and enables you to do things like eye autofocus and servo, throws in the intervalometer, and just overall is maybe a better ergonomic experience for using the camera, that would be the camera that I personally would buy and upgrade from our 5D Mark III's that we've had for seven years. But if you're in the market for a camera right now and you have something below a 60, so something like a 60, 70, or 80D, or something in the T5, 6i series, something like that, and you're looking to upgrade, this is a great camera. If you have 6Ds or 5Ds, whether Mark III's or Mark IVs, and you're looking to kind of side grade or get into mirrorless or have a more compact camera body, and some of those features that I was talking about really entice you, like the eye autofocus, like the electronic viewfinder and the bigger focus area, and these new lenses and the lens mounts and everything like that. This is a good camera overall. It takes amazing images. It just has some quirks for me ergonomically for how I'm using it to take photos that kind of bother me. I made a video with my wife that's way longer than this quick review that talks through her experience using it after taking hundreds of thousands of images on a 5D Mark III, using the EOS R for a couple shoots of hers, and the pros and cons of each of those things. So click up in the eye icon here, that'll take you to the video with her. It's way longer, way more detailed walkthrough of all the different features and some of the things we've liked and not liked about this camera. So definitely check that out if you are wanting to dive in more into this camera and see if it's right for you. Or if you're interested in the video features, I did a whole review for filmmakers or YouTubers or people using this to record video as well. So definitely check that out too. I'm Michaela Bojic, thanks so much for watching this review and I'll see you in another one.